Since 1941, the Prince Edward Island Federation of Agriculture has been there for island producers. It has weathered a world war, the Green Revolution, the consolidation of farms, the intensification and mechanization of farming, disease, commodity highs and commodity lows, and has grown only stronger. Today, the membership of the Prince Edward Island Federation of Agriculture is diverse. It stretches from one end of the island to the other. It is made up of families, some of them sixth and seventh generation farmers, who are passionate about agriculture and its future. People who understand that we are stronger as one voice together than we are apart, that there is strength in unity. The uh, Federation is the voice of uh, island farmers, that we stand up for issues that the farming community has, that we work together with farmers, the grassroots organization to advocate for them, to government, to the public, uh, to, uh, to the people that need to know what's going on. It really is the people with dirt under their fingernails, if you will, the people that grow food. And, you know, when you look at our needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and you look at food, water, shelter, clothing, all those things come from agriculture, right? Cotton, woodlot, all the things that we have, even energy comes from food. So I think because it meets the basic needs, I think there'll always be a need to have agriculture. I think it'll always be something that we'll have to have, and so we'll always have to have a voice for agriculture. I just think it's very important that all farmers have a, a, a voice that will represent them. We sound, we look much better if we're represented collectively. In the early beginning of the Federation, there were over 10,000 farms across the island, with a farm population of over 55,000 people almost half of the island's population. By 1976, this number dropped to 3,054 farms and almost 16,000 people, 13.4% of the population. In the most recent census, there was 1,495 farms, home to approximately 5,000 islanders, or 3.7% of the population. The divide between the farming community and the rest of the public has never been wider. The need for the Federation to speak up with conviction for the island farming community has perhaps never been more important. I think that the uh, role of the Federation uh, has changed quite a bit over the last, I'm going to say 20 years or so. Certainly when I first got involved here on PEI, which would have been about 1981 or so. I think farmers are a much smaller part of the population. They're two, three percent even here on PEI. Um, there isn't uh, that perhaps understanding uh, that might have been there 20 years ago that the general public uh, has generally I don't want to say lost interest in agriculture, but there, again, there isn't that sort of automatic understanding of the role that farmers play in the economy, the importance of what they do in terms of producing food and jobs and the, the role in the GDP. If you look back 100 years, I think the statistic is that 85% of the people lived in rural PEI. And so they understood and saw agriculture every day. And now it's like, what you don't see, you don't understand. Most of the people live in Charlottetown and Summerside. So we have a bigger job than ever, I think, to be telling our story in agriculture. With in excess of 600 members and 16 commodity associations, the PEI Federation of Agriculture represents 85 to 90 percent of those island farmers. And almost all of the 600,000 acres worth of production currently found on the island. The organization provides a strong voice for individuals and our member organizations that lends weight to their issues and ensures they do not go unheard. The thing I think most about the Federation is it doesn't matter whether you're uh, someone that has five to ten acres or someone that has three thousand acres, everyone is treated the same. And on the board level, it doesn't matter if you're a dairy farmer or a blueberry farmer or a potato farmer or what size, everyone's opinion is, is important and plays a role. And I think that's a telling piece of the organization. That's where the strength of the organization is. 
Every member has a voice in this organization. They can call me, they can email me, they can talk to a commodity group that's a member. They're able to influence policy individually just as much as we are as a collective group. If you've got an issue, if you've got concerns, you should be bringing them forward to the Federation. Agriculture has come so far and can now feed so many. In the last century, the average farm was able to feed 10 people. Today, the average farm feeds well over 120. Many people remember the imagery of the small farms found before the advent of the Federation and some point to the need to return to a smaller scale form of farming, arguing it is more sustainable. But the people who lived and worked on them are rarely nostalgic for the reality of that challenging way of life. The farm's low productivity supported much smaller populations, environmental awareness was much lower, and food quality and quantity were highly unpredictable, or food was simply not available at certain times of the year. I think this was in 1946, and I had just come home from Prince of Wales, and one morning my father and I got up, I don't know what time, and uh, Simmons McFarland's potato truck was in the yard looking for a load of potatoes. And uh, we had potatoes for them, so we had to load that, that truck, carry them out of the cellar manually before breakfast or anything else, you know. And I know that was very, very hard work. And I know it wasn't very long after that that um, my father geared up a sleigh that he could, and runners on the steps, you see, with a horse, a two horse, yeah, I guess the one horse. And then we'd uh, unload the potatoes onto a truck. And that was certainly a great labor saver. The research, innovation, and commitment to learning found in organizations such as the Federation has meant continual progress in how we care for our land and animals, and has helped us reach our goal to produce larger quantities of safe food. The challenge we wholeheartedly share today is to feed our country sustainably in a way which is good for people, animals, and the planet. For this unprecedented challenge, together with the increasing global population, the past can't provide the answers, but rather the solid foundation on which to improve. As the world's climate continues to change, population levels continue to rise, and arable land continues to disappear, we need agriculture to continue to advance, producing more food more efficiently. The Federation of Agriculture, I would say, stands out as an organization because it is particularly proactive. Uh, they tend not to come uh, begging or looking for something that's just for them. They, they look at issues and get out in front of them. Uh, I think of the work that we did uh, in the last session on animal welfare, uh, where the Federation was very much part of the really the grassroots and bringing that uh, forward or it could be broader uh, public policy things such as uh, the environment or tax policy uh, and in all cases I, I believe the federation it does its homework it has the backing of its community uh, and it comes to government uh, in a spirit of uh, how can we work together the federation's model of working to improve the sustainability of island farms and farm families has never been more important than it is today. And members can be assured that working to ensure and preserve agriculture in the face of today's new challenges will continue to be the focus of their leadership. The organization has lasted 75 years because farmers are very passionate about what it is they do. And they've recognized that if they work together, they can bring solutions forward to affect public policy in a positive way and that their farm will continue on for centuries to come. So I wish the PEI Federation of Agriculture another 75 years of success and many more of leadership of our community and continued prosperity for Prince Edward Island farmers. Farmers recognize that there is true strength in unity, that we are stronger when we speak with one voice than we are without the Federation. This sentiment has survived the test of time and we believe will continue forward well into the future.